Welcome to Reading Under the Covers, a romance novel podcast. I'm Francesca from Under the Covers book blog, and today I am excited to bring you another Romanceopoly reading recommendations episode. If you guys don't know, Romanceopoly is a year-long reading challenge where you can basically explore all subgenres of romance and also step a little bit outside of that as well, which will guarantee you a just really diverse and fun year of reading. The challenge is designed as a board, and you can basically go through the board either by rolling the dice or going challenge by challenge in order. Each challenge has a reading prompt or a specific genre or subgenre assigned to it. So you'll either choose one of those options and pick a book that fits the category. Now, there are a lot of challenges, but you don't necessarily have to read all of them and complete the whole board in order to complete the challenge. So I suggest that you head over to romanceappley.com and you can find all of the rules if you want to participate. There is definitely still time for you to participate and read along with us. And remember that sometimes participating in a reading challenge may not necessarily just be about finishing the challenge, but just the experience itself. So it's never too late to join us and come and participate with Romanceappley. For today's episode, I have book recommendations for City Lane. And the prompt for this is to read a funny urban fantasy. I happen to absolutely love funny urban fantasies. I feel like I need to even read more of them. I'm always on the lookout. So I was very excited that we managed to include this prompt this year on the board. And if you're not doing board challenges and you're just doing the genre, it is an urban fantasy challenge. So these recommendations will fit no matter which one of the two you're completing. Now, I think there are some classics when it comes to thinking of a funny urban fantasy. And there are also some urban fantasies that have small elements of fun and humor in them. Like, for example, our beloved K. Daniels series by Ilona Andrews. There's definitely so much humor in that series, but I still wouldn't necessarily be calling it a funny urban fantasy. But if you have not read that series yet, I will leave a link in the show notes down below where you can get our complete series guide on that series. It is absolutely amazing. It is a must read series if you're a fan of urban fantasy. And you know what? There's enough humor in it. So you could just read it for this prompt too. But we're not talking Kate Daniels today. So let's dive right into my recommendations that I have for you guys for funny urban fantasies that you can read for Romanceopoly. Again, this is for City Lane. The first one I picked up on a complete whim. And actually it was a social media recommendation by Ilona Andrews, and that is Death and Relaxation by Devin Monk. This is the first book in the Ordinary Magic series. I have also read some of the other books in the series. Absolutely loved it. It's it's a series that has a small town vibe and plenty of humor, where we dive into this chaotic world and unique world of ordinary Oregon. The heroine in this book is the police chief, and she's got her hands full with a mix of supernaturals in the town. You've got vampires and werewolves and all kinds of creatures, but you also have the vacationing gods who are always causing trouble. Because yes, this is basically the place where the gods come on vacation. And we also even have death on vacation here. With the rhubarb festival fast approaching delaney our herring is juggling so many things way more than the usual small town drama and also the looming threat of godly tantrums and as if things are not complicated enough her ex also shows up just when she's starting to catch feelings for Ryder, her childhood friend and the guy that she should not be having any feelings for but then a dead body washes ashore and it's not just anybody it's a god's body now delaney has to solve the murder of a god, deal with the fallout of the god power on the loose, and try to keep the apocalypse on hold. All of that while navigating small town drama and her love life. It's just another day in the life of the ordinary chief of police where ordinary is anything but. I've got a full review for this book on the blog and I will leave it linked in the show notes down below as well, but highly recommend that you check out this book and that you check out this series. You'll find lots of endearing characters, a lot of also fantastic family and family as well because our heroine has her bond with her sisters. You'll get your fix for romance, unlikely sidekicks, and I would say kind of medium stakes. It's not super high stakes, but it's definitely not low stakes. So it's just got the perfect mix 
And it's also perfect for summer. I think all of these funny urban fantasies are perfect summer reads as well, or transitioning between summer and fall reading. And if you're watching this and you're deep into your fall reading or your dark paranormal reads, these are great palette cleansers in between those as well. The next one that I'm going to recommend should come as no surprise to any of you because it's actually one of my absolute favorite series in urban fantasy. And we've done nothing but recommend this series here at Under the Covers. And that is First Grave on the Right by Dorinda Jones. This is the first book in the Charlie Davidson series, one of our all-time absolute favorite urban fantasy series here at Under the Covers. Dorinda Jones is one of our favorite authors. In fact, a few years ago, we had posted a video with Dorinda Jones answering some interview questions from us. And I'll be sure to also leave that link in the show notes below as well. I think it's super fun. Her series is so amazing. You'll definitely want to be reading it and definitely read it in order. So Charlie Davidson is a part-time private investigator and full-time Grim Reaper. Yes, you heard that right. Charlie sees dead people and it's basically her job to help them go into the light. But when the deceased have been murdered, it is often very tricky. They usually like to stick around to see justice being served. As if juggling ghost Mostly clients and solving murders was not enough. Charlie's nights are haunted by really hot dreams about this mysterious dark figure that's been haunting her and following her for as long as she can remember. The twist is that he's actually not dead. In fact, he might actually be something way more complicated and dangerously attractive. And believe me, you'll want to stick around with this series until you find out exactly who he is because he is one of my all-time favorite paranormal heroes, and you'll probably be calling him your book boyfriend as well. This series will give you lots of laugh-out-loud humor, incredible sizzling chemistry, and First Grave on the Right is just that perfect introduction to a world where the dead don't really rest in peace and the living are just full of surprises. I would say that the Charlie Davidson series is a classic in this category, so if you have not read it, you have to at least give yourself a try and check it out. Now, the next book is one that I read recently, and I was super excited to read it because it gave me the Charlie Davidson vibes that I have been missing since finishing the series, even though the element of paranormal is slightly less because where Charlie Davidson sees ghosts, this one just has basically psychic abilities. It definitely is a little more toned down when it comes to the paranormal, but the humor is definitely there and the set of characters and the vibe of the story as well. And that is The Dead Guy Next Door by Lucy Score. This is the first book in the Riley Thorne series. And if I could also compare it to something that is contemporary, and it is something that I've also compared the Dorinda Jones, Charlie Davidson series to, is Janet Ivanovich, Stephanie Plum series. So if you like that, you'll definitely enjoy both of these series. Now, Riley Thorne's life is anything but ordinary. She's divorced. She's broke. She's living in this quirky building full of elderly neighbors. And she's been having these hallucinations her whole life that she's been basically ignoring. Meanwhile, her tarot reading mom keeps telling her that those are not hallucinations and she's actually having clairvoyant visions. Sounds great, doesn't it? Except one of those visions is that she sees her next door neighbor being murdered in his apartment. And things get very real when a private investigator investigator shows up knocking on that neighbor's door one day. He's charming, he's good looking, and together they find her next door neighbor dead. Now, her vision has come to life and she is definitely prime suspect in this private investigator's eyes. While the police are investigating, he's been hired also to find out what really happened to him. And while he also needs to investigate her, he definitely needs her help to uncover some of the clues and crack the case. So they team up to solve this murder at the same time as she's having to come to terms with her powers and her abilities and just deal with her attraction to Nick and also with her meddling family. If you're looking for that family vibe, also found family and lots of humor with a great sight romance, then this is going to be a great series for you to check out. It's fun, it's thrilling, there's chemistry between the two characters. It's got a touch of supernatural and also a great whodunit mystery. The next book that I have for you guys is also one that's super interesting because it's very different and it is Karma Girl by Jennifer Estep. This is the first book in the Big Time series. Now, Karma Girl is basically a superhero story 
there is a bit of romance in it, but it is more of an urban fantasy with a dose of romance, as opposed to a paranormal romance, at least in my opinion. Our heroine, who is not a superhero, she's an investigative reporter, and on her wedding day, she gets the shock of her life when she finds out that her fiancé is a superhero, and her best friend is a supervillain, and they've been basically cheating on her, and she finds them together right on her wedding day. So to spite them, she decides to expose their identities and writes this article on her newspaper. It goes massively viral, and she becomes the reporter that is in charge of exposing all those superheroes and supervillains all over the country. So she travels from city to city until she uncovers the identity and exposes those superheroes. Then she lands her latest job at a top newspaper in big time New York. It's a city full of masked superheroes and supervillains, and everything seems to be going great until she's kidnapped by the terrible triad uber villain team. They basically give her the task of uncovering the identity of Stryker, who is the leader of the Fearless Five, that is the superheroes team of the city, or face a deadly fate. As she starts to dig into Stryker's life, and also has her run-in encounters with him, a la Lewis Lane and Clark Kent, she finds herself unexpectedly attracted and drawn to him. So she's torn between her duty as a reporter, the threat that she's facing, and dealing with the internal struggle of the reasons why she's been doing this job, all of that while dealing with her growing feelings for Stryker. In Karma Girl, Carmen has to navigate these feelings, try to defeat the terrible triad that's threatening her life, navigate this dangerous world of secret identities, a bit of romance, and high stakes action. It's a really fun and thrilling superhero urban fantasy romance with plenty of twists and turns, and you'll definitely want to continue reading on the series as well. The next one is also a bit different, and I read this book years and years ago, but I still remember how much I enjoyed reading it, and that is My Life as a White Trash Zombie by Diana Rowland. It is the first book in the White Trash Zombie series, and I remember picking this up mainly because of the cover art. It is artwork by Dan Dos Santos, which is the same artist that does the covers for the Patricia Briggs series. Absolutely stunning. Every single cover in this series. Love them. But I'm happy to report that the book was also a ton of fun. And I love that it doesn't take itself too seriously while still delivering a great urban fantasy read with that packs the action, a great plot, great characters, and just lots of fun. Our heroine Angel's life is a mess. She's a high school dropout living in the swamps of southern Louisiana with her alcoholic dad. She has a criminal record and a pill habit. She's been in and out of crappy jobs and now faces probation for a felony. However, things get even weirder for her when she wakes up in the ER from a supposed overdose, only to find no sign of injury from the car crash that she actually remembers. Then she receives an anonymous letter that directs her to a job at the parish's morgue, a job that she can't refuse because Angel suddenly finds herself craving brain and developing a major crush on a hunky deputy all while trying to navigate her undead life. As if that wasn't enough, there's a serial killer on the loose, decapitating victims and making Angel's cravings even harder to control. To survive in this new world and in this new life, Angel has to grow up very fast, balance this bizarre new appetite that she has, and keep her new job or she's basically dead meat. I can guarantee you that My Life as a White Trash Zombie is going to be a quirky and darkly funny take on zombie life. It's full of unexpected twists, and you'll find our main character here who is very gritty, but at the same time totally relatable. The next one is also a series that we love to recommend here at Under the Covers, and it is Slouch Witch by Helen Harper. This is the first book in the Lazy Girl's Guide to Magic series, and Suzanne always talks about this series. I will leave links to the reviews for all of the books that I've talked about that we have posted on the blog and the show notes down below. But in Slouch Witch, which we're introduced to Ivy, and she's a witch who's anything but your typical heroine. Her ideal day involves lounging on the couch, binge watching TV shows, munching on junk food, and arguing with her cat. 
definitely not fighting crime and casting spells. But due to a mix-up, her laid-back lifestyle is turned upside down when she's mistakenly enlisted into the Arcane Branch, which is the investigative arm of the Holy Order of Magical Enlightenment. So now, instead of just lounging and chilling at home, she's dragged into a case that involves a stolen valuable object. To make matters worse, she's paired with Raphael, who is serious and kind of perfect, so definitely polar opposite from her carefree vibe. Those pretty eyes definitely make her stomach flutter, but his uptight attitude drives her mad. The tension between them is palpable, and not so much in the romantic kind, but more in the I want to turn you into a frog type. Check this one out if you're looking for a magical detective. With sarcastic wit, and a lazy approach to magic. I think we can all relate to a witch that would rather avoid the heroics and just stay in bed all day. And the last book that I have for you guys today is Goddess with a Blade by Lauren Dane. This is the first book in the series by the same name. And our heroine Rowan is basically unlike any other. She is not just a vessel for the Celtic goddess Bridget, but she's also a vampire hunter raised by the leader of the vampire nation. With her supernatural powers, she's definitely a force to be reckoned with, ensuring that vampires are adhering to an ancient treaty. So when a series of gruesome murders strikes Las Vegas, Rowan goes on high alert. The new scion in town is arrogant and definitely powerful, and Rowan is not shy to make sure that he keeps his vampires in check. But despite their constant clashes, their undeniable chemistry, and sparks that fly, cannot be ignored. Now, as Rowan is trying to race against the clock to stop this killer so more women don't turn up dead, she has to navigate this attraction and feelings that she has for the vampire scion and this dangerous world that she inhabits. This is a great start for a sexy urban fantasy series. It's action-packed, it's such a fun read, there's lots of laugh-out-loud moments, and if you love strong heroines, steamy tension, and supernatural intrigue, then definitely Rowan's Adventures and Goddess with a Blade are going to be your next must-read. So, those are all the books that I have for you guys today. I hope that you found something that you want to dive into, all of these are series as well, so once you pick one up, you can just binge through the rest of them. I can highly recommend that you do that too. And if you've never picked up a funny urban fantasy, you're totally missing out, and I think you need to rectify that immediately. I would also love to know which ones are your favorites that I didn't include on this list, and I have even more recommendations of this genre on the blog, so I will definitely leave a link to our blog post with more funny urban fantasy recommendations in the show notes down below. As always, don't forget to visit the blog at undertheCoversBookBlog.com. Sign up for our newsletter so you get all the latest bookish news and recommendations in your email every single Sunday. Follow us on social media at UTC Book Blog on Instagram, TikTok, X, or Pinterest, or Under the Covers Book Blog on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and we'll see you again in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.